Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about the DSM. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the DSM. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual is the book used by healthcare professionals as a guide to mental health disorders. We've talked on the channel before about how important it is for scientists to use consistent definitions for the same words. The DSM makes sure everyone is able to use the same definitions and diagnostic criteria. Basically, the DSM gives the definitions for these scientific technical terms so that mental health professionals are all speaking the same language. Sort of like a dictionary, but for science. The DSM is used as the authoritative guide here in the U.S. and is distributed by the American Psychiatric Association. However, there is another broader version called the ICD, the International Statistical Classification of Diseases, put out by the World Health Organization. The ICD has an advantage because it covers diagnostic criteria for all kinds of health disorders, not just mental health. The ICD is free and available online. The DSM has the advantage of being produced by the backing of the APA's funding and also uses operational criteria, something that the ICD lacks. The APA devotes a massive amount of time, effort, and funding into the DSM. The last revision took over a decade and had contributing scientists from all over the world who were experts on neuroscience, genetics, public health, and of course, social, behavioral, and life sciences. Really, the progress that humanity has made in just the past 20 years is incredible. We know things now that we just didn't know then, and the DSM was revised to keep current with all of this newfound knowledge. The DSM-5 was published in 2013 and is the most current version right now of the DSM. Probably the biggest thing to know about the DSM is that while it ensures that psychologists are all speaking the same language when it comes to assessment and diagnosis of mental illness, it does not say how to best treat mental disorders. Treatment is left up to the mental health professional, and the DSM is there to ensure that patients and clients are getting appropriate diagnoses. Being a giant in the field, the DSM certainly has had its share of controversy and definitely has far to go before it could be called completely comprehensive, but it does represent the best science that we currently have available. If you want to know more about the things in your mental health world, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.